If it had been his choice, 10-year-old Eckhart Proy wouldn't have gone off to live in a boarding school and study music for the next eight years, but it was his father's decision, not his, and besides, it was Cold War East Germany, and Proy was to find that music offered a safer way to express his feelings in a communist regime than verbal outlets might allow. Today, he spends time on two U.S. coasts, conducting symphonies in Stamford, Connecticut, and here in Spokane. His job? Harnessing the disparate talents and energies of accomplished musicians to create beauty and harmony. Civic leaders tormented by discord might do well to borrow from his repertoire. Many people think that a conductor is a powerful position, and this is not about power. I and mean, power is handed to you, and people have to give you power. Otherwise, you're absolutely powerless. And, and in order to make people play better, I think is to remind them what they already know most of the time, to remind them why they are there, why, uh, what, uh, what uh, this phrase should be like, and say, of course, of course, I knew that. I knew that, actually, but I was just not remembering at the moment, or I didn't have time to think about it. Um, but then the most difficult thing, I think, is, I think for all leaders, is A, to be inspired, and B, to inspire. And that means, I think inspiration for me means that it's something new, something that I did not know. During a performance, it is, and in general, it's very important to know when to lead and when to let them play. I think that's, that's the most crucial, crucial thing. Uh, don't do anything when you don't, don't fix things when there's nothing, nothing to be fixed. So sometimes you just have to let, let, let the orchestra play and, and, and it will be much better than if you, if you try to do something. Before something goes wrong, you always know it beforehand, but usually too late to fix it. And I think that, is, that, is, that, makes, that makes a good conductor is to prevent things from happening. Let them play and then prevent things from, uh, from going wrong. Impatience for me is a means to get attention. I think I've, I've avoided being loud and yell and being impatient because I feel that I'm out of control. And, um, and, 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 and patience sometimes makes people think, oh, let's take it easy, let's take it easy. So sometimes uh, impatience or appearing impatient, I never am really impatient. But appearing impatient is a means to get someone's attention. And that has to be done very sporadically, goal-oriented, and you have to lighten it up right after way, uh, afterwards, particularly in music. Uh, you cannot base a performance or relationship with people who play music with you and are doing all this beautiful stuff. You cannot do that in a bad environment. I'm not in for legacy. Uh, that's why I'm. That's not why I'm, why I'm here. And I think it's for other people to decide. Um, but uh, what I'm trying to do is to make the symphony and classical music approachable and not a luxury. It's the greatest human achievement we have. That this is something that everybody should should be included in, and that that there's no difference in. Age, you know, it said seven year old can appreciate a Beethoven symphony as much as a 70 year old. Making classical music is, it is actually a serious business, but it's fun too, you know. I mean, there's it, only, only because it's classical music doesn't mean you have to be uptight and you have to be very strict and you have to be old and you have to be serious, uh, but that you can have a lot of fun as well. Mm -hmm.